I'm still that big again. Hello lovelies, welcome to the March 2023 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie, it's a podcast recorded on the south coast of the UK, all about yarny stuff. Mostly knitting and crochet, been a while since I've done any spinning, a little bit of machine knitting, bit of stuff, bit of this, bit of that, whatever I'm turning my crafty hands to. Hope everyone's well. Thank you so much for being here. Whether you're new or returning, it's lovely to have you here, so thank you. Thanks for all the comments and thoughts on last month's episode. Lovely to hear from you. Great to hear what you're working on, what your ideas are. Really appreciate that. It's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast, despite the abundance of woolly stuff behind me, because I rarely have enough to make a whole garment of the, uh, out of the same yarn. I tend to buy stuff because I like the colour so I'll get a skein here and a skein there and then end up with a lot of stripy things. Uh, any hand knits I'm wearing throughout the podcast I will link the details below. For example this is the Ursa by Jacqueline Sislak and if you saw last week's podcast you saw that I had redone the neckline to make it a little narrower, not quite so deep so it's a more wearable garment for me. I record as I go through the month and then I put it all together and post on the last weekend of the month. Also every Friday I put up a weekly vlog which is, it touches on the craft that I'm doing but it's mostly about um, whatever's happening in my life. Which hasn't been a great deal recently, I'll be perfectly honest. But that's okay, that's fine. It can't all be beer and skittles, can it? No. So this month, um, I'm more taking things apart than putting things together this month, as you'll see later. But I am going to start with loveliness. And the loveliness comes from you, lovely, lovely people. I ran a make-along last year. I ran two because I ran the December mal as well and one person, a lady called Martha, Martha, sorry, Martha, that's in South Wales, a lady called Martha um, was the winner of two pattern prizes and Martha contacted me and said very much appreciate it but don't need any more patterns please redraw which was a lovely thing to do. I redrew and Nikki one twice as well. So when I drew the, the name, Nikki came out twice. So, and I was happy for them to have two pattern prizes or if there was an ebook they wanted, you know, I mean, they've been taking part in the mail, so more than happy with the pattern prizes. I mean, with the yarn prizes, it's different because they're, they're bigger, so it's nice to kind of share the love. But um, with the pattern prizes, more than happy for them to go to the same person. But Nikki came back and said, that's very kind, uh, but I'll only have one, thank you very much. So she chose The Banyan by Nicola Suzanne, and uh, regular viewers will know that I am a fan of Nicola Suzanne, and I've made one and I have another one on the go, and another one that's uh, in process at the moment. So I've, I've led someone astray. This is my sorry, not sorry face. And Nikki was more than happy for me to draw the next one again the, the the other prize and i thought about it for a while and i thought i'm not going to do it on the podcast and then it's another month that i'm just going to contact the next person i draw and say here's what's happened would you like a prize and that person was shirley knits one two three uh shirley's a long time viewer of the podcast hi shirley hope all is well with you and I contacted her and she chose the Ecuador by Jorge Locatelli. So thank you to the people who are just so kind and so open hearted that they say, do you know what, I just enjoyed taking part, I don't need a prize. And enabled me to 
pass that on and it happened twice so you guys are the best thank you so much uh, there isn't a make along running just at this moment but i think there might be one starting next month i'm just sort of putting ideas to, someone suggested a, a topic and i'm just kind of formulating it in my head at the moment if you listen closely you can hear the cogs whirring and um yes i think i'm going to run one throughout the summer summer has nothing to do with it it's not themed to summer at all but uh that's the plan so yes that's my next uh make along which will probably start beginning of april but like i say i'll put the thoughts together and later in the podcast you'll see uh what what it is life has meant that not a lot of crafting has been done um i have made some more hats for homeless people on my whirly whirly machine which is my aliexpress king size uh, a couple of months ago i was given a bag of yarn there's a lot of uh acrylic so it's nice machine washable fairly you know holds up fairly well for people in difficult circumstances so i made some hats don't have them to show you because i've already donated them i was going to the uh, the charity that um it's a charity called warming up the homeless which is based in my local area and they also have a charity shop, a thrift store, where you can donate things to be sold on. So I had a load of stuff for donation, so I took them a bag of hats at the same time. So here's a picture of the hats that I made. Um, I'd still have some of that yarn to use, so there will be more hats as well. But we are getting towards the warmer weather, so I might wait and uh, wait until the autumn time and do them when they're closer to being needed. I'll see how the mood takes me. That's how I craft. I see how the mood takes me. And I know that can sometimes lead to erratic crafting and my mind changing and that sort of thing. But my craft is the thing I want to do without pressure. And that's why, you know, some months I've got lots done, some months I haven't got much done at all. And that's that's what I use my crafting for in a way. I mean, yes, I use it to keep myself warm, really. <coughs> but also I like to just make things. I like to make pretty things with pretty colours. So. Uh, no yarn incoming this month, as far as I can tell, despite the fact that himself has been to Spain and has been to Scotland I'm obviously just here to do the laundry, aren't I? So now, he brought back a lot of yarn from the States when he went in January, so I'm not complaining really. Keeping that one in the back pocket in case I need that argument, you know. All the games we play. Anyway, I'm wittering now, so I shall stop wittering and see you in the next clip. Hello lovelies. Last month, I was correcting a couple of knits that needed a bit of adjustment to make them more to the style of thing I wanted to wear. I had some very positive feedback from that, so I thank you. I'm obviously on a bit of a spring cleaning type of kick. I say type because I, I don't do a lot of cleaning, but it's that sort of sense of wanting to kind of have a bit of a sort out of the cupboards make sure that everything I've got is useful and ready to go and all of those things. So I've done another little project to avoid too much decolletage. Um, I have a dress that I use for work. It's a navy blue dress. And usually I'm wearing a jacket over it and the jacket is done up. But I'm conscious of getting towards warmer weather and I may want to wear it with an open jacket or something like that. And it was a little bit low cut in the V. So I knitted a small piece which I have sewn in and I will show you a picture of it here. So as you can do, see just a very small piece of knitting. Um, it's some, I think it's some lace weight that I was holding double because it's stuff that I've taken out of my Banyan project bag which is here that's why I'm pointing in that direction obviously. Um, 
and just uh, started with a couple of stitches, just decre uh, increased rapidly. And then a bit of lace across the top just to give it a bit of something. How well it will hold up to laundry and that sort of thing, I don't know. If need be, I can unpick it and put a fabric piece in there. That's doable, but I just thought a knitted piece would be a bit more interesting. So, so that's my latest using knitting to make a garment more wearable. I've also been examining some of my old works in progress and um, thinking about whether I still use them, whether I could reuse the yarn better. I always say that the reason I never steek is not fear and terror of taking scissors to my knitting, obviously, but it's because I like the idea of being able to reuse the yarn, being able to unpick the garment and make something else. Well, the thing I've unpicked was crochet, so it wouldn't have been steeked anyway, but the, the principle was sound. I could undo it and reuse the yarn. So cast your mind back. I'm going to take you back about probably 15 years. And there was a, a phase for circular garments. And I'm assuming about 15 years because I made one 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and I'm usually a little behind the curve. So I'm assuming that 15 years ago, everyone was saying we should make circles and put sleeves in them and they'll be gorgeous. So I had the idea floating around for a while and then I decided to make one. And here are some photographs of the one that I made. So it was made 2012, I think, with an assortment of yarns that had been bought um, on a lot of them on holiday in the States and Canada. And I wore this a few times and it was certainly very cosy. Double knitting and worsted weight yarn and crocheted. So very cosy, but not practical. Being double knitting and worsted weight and crochet, it's quite heavy. And the shape of thing, the thing meant that it's, it was quite wide across the neck. So it was always falling, falling off my shoulders. I have round shoulders things will fall off unless there is something to keep them secure. And I did put some buttons on, but it just didn't sort of feel right. And this is uh, something that happens with garments where you're making them in one piece kind of center out. And it doesn't matter if that's like the adult surprise jacket, which isn't center out, but it, it's one piece. You're basically working both dimensions at once. So the circular items are like this. They work beautifully on quite slender people because the height to width ratio works. If you are someone who is average height, wider than average body size, it doesn't work. So this jacket to get the width I needed to be able to go all the way around me and to wrap around the way you'd want it to, it came down to my calves. Or you have this massive collar, which adds to the weight and pulls it off your shoulders. So it just doesn't work. It needs adjusting. And some very clever designers have done adjustments. So I'm gonna put a picture in here of my swirl jacket which I do occasionally wear. I need to dig that out of a cupboard because it's getting towards the time of year where that is a good weight. And the designer basically geared that towards different body shapes. So it is still quite long, but because it's not a circle, a circle, a circular pattern, it was designed in such a way that it's more like an oblong shape. So you have more width than length, which is what you want. That was probably very badly explained. Basically, the upshot is I unpicked my large circular cardigan. So what was my large circular crochet cardigan is now this lot. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot of yarn and 
some of the um, skeins are quite small because they were just short stripes on a sleeve. It is at this point that I regret having so many different colours in a garment and so many different stripes because there's a lot of skeins here. But all this yarn is reusable and it's mostly wool based yarn so we've got some Cascade 220 in there we've got some King Cole um, Merino we've got some John Arban we've got some Mirasol I think that's what that is there's all sorts in here basically and I feel the need to use this pretty quickly I think it sat in the stash for a long time um, before it got made into the, the circular jacket and I don't want to have that happen again so I, I want to use it fairly quickly so I, I did a little swatch it and swatch aficionados will say to me rightly that's not a proper swatch Leslie it's not been blocked it's not big enough yeah I know but I just wanted a kind of rough idea I was tempted to go with another Nicola Suzanne pattern because you don't have to swatch, you start off with a few stitches and you work from there. But I decided not to. I am going to make Harvest by Tin Can Knits. And that's what I switched, switched for. Oh, words today, obviously not working. That's what I swatched for, so I know roughly. I'm not looking for it to be a really close fitting item. I want a fair bit of uh, positive ease. I just wanted to make sure that when I started knitting, I would have some positive ease rather than have it too tight. Because I'm unpicking another sweater, which um, was fairly snug when I made it and is snugger now. So that one's uh, ring taken apart and uh, deconstructed for the same reason. So I'm gonna make Harvest Tin Can Knits. I won't need all of these yarns and in fact the ones I'm not going to use are the bright pinks so my idea is to have a basically like a fade ish type of thing stripes or fade purple down into navy that's my thought process with these yarns so I can now ball them up the ones that I'm going to use anyway and start knitting there will not be any finished objects this month. I will show you works in progress. Uh, I haven't started this yet, so this won't be included in the works in progress. So I've got a couple of things to show you for works in progress. Kind of sorry, not sorry. It would be lovely to be able to show you a finished object, but life hasn't presented that particular opportunity this month. So... Apologies that there are no FOs to show you, but that's just the way things go. So um, I've had a fair amount of work still, it's still been pretty busy, and I still have a family member in hospital, and the hospital is now a two and three quarter hours drive away. So going to see them, rather than being an evening, it's an all day thing at the weekend, which I'm more than happy to do. But that's knitting time I don't have. Also, a combination of more driving than I'm used to and a lot of work uh, has meant I'm quite tired. So my mojo hasn't been as strong and there have been evenings when I've just kind of sat on the sofa, rested the brain a little, hand on the dog, just watching rubbish telly because that's all I have the the physical energy and the mental energy to do so yes i am sorry that i don't have finished objects to show you because it's always nice to be able to say look at this lovely thing that i've made but not always the case and i'm sure all of you out there who craft who knit who crochet who do all the things have been in a similar situation at some point so i hope that you'll forgive me it's just the way things are but then there'll be a month when I might have two sweaters to show you you know I mean that sometimes happens too so I'm now going to ball some of this up and 
start making a harvest. Hello lovelies. Uh, firstly, this is just a poncho that I made four different um, crochet squares out of Noro that I then sewed together. There, that's easy. I have made the decision this week to unpick a sweater that I showed last week that I had started. Excuse that noise, that's the dog just rubbing herself over the furniture. Okay, um, <laughs> she's in my eye line, sorry. This I'm calling my Fifty Shades of Red sweater and I had started making the four sweater by Nicola Suzanne. And basically I messed it up. And I've messed it up to the point where I don't want to make that anymore. I will use that pattern another time. Oh. So what did I do wrong? Well, I cast on. I'm joking. I tried to add a bit of detail. Now the four sweater has four panels. And these are where you do your increases. It gives it an A-line sort of tunic sort of look. I thought I'd put a bit of stitch detail in. So I started doing a, a small cable, like just a two stitch cable. And I'm just not happy with how that's coming out. It's not looking all that good. The other thing I did was um, I wanted to do a neck treatment, like another of Nicola Suzanne's patterns, which is called Tanslay, I think, which has this kind of folded stocking stitch brim. Well, it works on the Tansley because it's quite a small neck. The four has a, a wider and sort of deeper neck. So it ends up like this. So basically, the best it's going to look like is like I'm waiting for the rest of the space helmet to attach to it. That's not the look I'm going for. Not sure what just fell, but it doesn't matter because, oh, it was a stitch marker. I'm about to say thank you for this at the moment. I'm aware I've spent time on it, but it's not working. And I'm not in the business of making things that I don't want. Well, I have been in the past. I have learned from that. So I'm gonna unpick this. Of course, the beauty of having got this far, because it is disappointing to have to to stop when you've done a fair bit of knitting. But it does mean I have a large swatch. So whereas the joy of the Nicola Suzanne patterns, the super maximum freedom ones, is that you don't have to swatch, you just start and then the measure you know you take some measurements of yourself before you start. And then you just follow the instructions and go from there, which is fab. But I have now a large swatch. I know what my gauge is. And so I'm going to use a pattern that has a gauge to it. The frustrating thing is I had sewn over this collar. I wish I hadn't done that, but there we go. So what am I going to make? Stop wittering, Leslie. I am going to make... Floof by Skane Deer. It's a pattern I've made before. I made it as a cardigan and I did a very un -Skane Deer thing because um, Skane Deer is a fan of steaking and I am not. So um, I made a cardigan and I worked back and front even though that's a, actually a sweater pattern to be worked in the round. This time I'm doing a sweater. Now because it has quite a neat neckline I may still try this folded over stocking stitch neckband I'm going to keep this yarn separate when I unpick this lot and when I come to pick up the neckband I'll use that yarn and then I'll decide at the time whether I think the stocking stitch is a good idea or a traditional rib or something else altogether I may even do um, the type of neck that I did on my whatever sweater, which is the white one I wear often with uh, lots of different colours in. And that is sort of started as a band and then I split it so it's like a collar 
rather than a, a roll neck or anything like that. So we shall see. But I am now needleless. And yeah, this just this particular yarn pattern combination wasn't working for me. I will make the four. I will make the pattern. But I think I'm going to make it in something. Uh, I've no idea what I'm going to make it in. I don't know why I started that. So, <laughs> but yes, this strange looking thing is going to go back to its starting position. And we'll go from there. So even less a chance of a finished object, but that's okay. It's not a race. Cheers. Hello lovelies. I said there might be a new Mal, and there is. But before then, I am wearing my Magpie Tendency by I think Scananigans, but I'll link everything below. And this little shawlette is called Le Weekend. And I made it, oh gosh, a good 10 years ago, I would guess, uh, with a ball of yarn that I was given. I think it was a, a gift for subscribing to a magazine or something like that. So that is what I am wearing. But on to the mail. A couple of months ago, Hilary, who is the podcaster behind Hemlock Knits, suggested a Crafting for Donations um, make-along. And I said, oh, I'll give that some thought. I have. And I'm actually going to broaden it, and I'm going to call it the Crafting for Someone Else Mal. So charity donations are, of course, part of that, but it might be a gift that you're making for someone... Um, that's it. Basically, it's just a bit of crafting that's not for yourself. Just for a change. Well, it's a change for me anyway. And to be eligible has to be some kind of yarn craft. So knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving. You could be spinning a skein of yarn to give to someone else, for example. And yes, basically, the only rule is the finished item has to be for another person. This will go live on the 1st of April. Is my phone pinging? Thank you. And it will run until the 31st of October. Uh, I realise that people will be working on Christmas knits in that time. I mean, clearly not me, because I'm not that organised, but some people will be. Um, and that's fine. As long as the object's finished by the end of October, it's eligible to take part in the mail. But I thought I'd finish it end of October to kind of get it done before we then get into the, the run-up for Christmas and other sort of winter festivals and celebrations where gifts may be being made. Um, I'm going to run it on Ravelry. So the usual um, rules apply in that if you can't use Ravelry, if you can email me on notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com with your entry, I'll add it to the Ravelry threads. I know Ravelry isn't for everyone. I've just got to go with the kind of experience on this one. And people have been emailing me with their entries. And it has worked. It, there haven't been hundreds of entries coming in via email to make me think that there are hundreds of people who can't use Ravelry. So hopefully that's flexible enough to accommodate everyone. Right. Uh, there'll be two threads on Ravelry. There'll be a chatter thread where you can put your chat, your work's in progress. You can talk to each other. You can say, what do you think of this? You can say, would I, should I use this colour or this one? Have a conversation. We're nice people around here. Chat, it'd be lovely. So that's the chatter thread. There'll also be a finished object thread, which will be set up for no chatter. And it is finished objects only to win a prize from that thread. Whips are allowed going into the mouse. So if you're halfway through something, absolutely fine. But please put finished objects only in the finished object thread. Now, sometimes people kind of get confused. They put things in the wrong place. If there is a finished object Sorry, if there is a, a work in progress or a picture of a ball of yarn or something in the finished objects thread, I won't necessarily come back to you about it, but when I draw the prizes, if that comes up, I'll just draw again. Basically, whatever's in there, if it's not eligible, you won't win. That seems only fair because 
these things are arbitrary, but you've got to have some boundaries and rules, haven't you? So that's kind of what we're going with. Okay. Um, I will do draw quarterly prizes at the end of June and at the end of September. So on the chatter thread, it'll be a pattern prize up to the dollar uh, US dollar value of $15. And the finished object thread will be offered a physical prize. So that'll be a bag or yarn or something like that. And this is open internationally. So wherever you are in the world, I will send you your prize. I will also do a grand draw at the end of October. So that will pick up everything that's been running, that's entered into the threads from the 1st of April to the end of October. So it will give everyone who's entered in those first two quarters a second chance and pick up those in the final quarter as well. So I think that's it. So basically making something for someone else, chatter thread and finished object thread on Ravelry. Hope you enjoy it. Good luck. Thanks Hilary for the suggestion. If there's anything that's remotely unclear, please do let me know and I will attempt to clarify. <laughs> Cheers. Hello lovelies. I'm going to give you a quick uh, round up of my works in progress and it will be quick because I'm only going to talk about two of them. Um, I have restarted the red sweater using the floof pattern. Got about that much on it which is good. Um, I've also started the harvest. I've done that much. Those aren't the two I'm going to show you. I'll go into a bit more detail with these others. So these are both projects you've seen before, possibly not for a little while. And the first is my crochet boxy, which is enormous because boxes are, and that's why we love them. So this is based on the boxy by Hohi Locatelli, but my crochet version. So I did one last year in rainbow colours. This year I'm doing gorgeous stripes. These are, I've got these. So some cones of yarn that uh, I was kindly given. I've also got some plain brown, dark brown, which uh, I've put at the bottom here, but may also come into play if I run out of these before I finish the sweater. You know how it goes. So, at the moment, just working round and round. So this is the project I have in the car because it's not something I need to look at the pattern. I just need to work treble stitches, US double uh, crochet in a large tube. Comme ça. So this is where I was last time I showed you anything. So I've sort of doubled from what I'd done then, but I can't remember how long ago that was. And does it matter? So I shall move the stitch marker now. And this will just be round and round and round until I get to the point where I need to um, divide for the sleeves. And as the boxy has small sleeves, because they start about here, that will be quite a while. But I'm pleased with how that's coming along. It's got quite a nice drape to it. This is um, a sort of four ply fingering weight equivalent and I'm using a three and a half millimeter hook which is an E. So quite a loose drapey fabric but that's what I'm going for. I want this to be a kind of tunic sort of loose hanging type of item. Interested how the colours are coming along because for a long time I've sort of had these yellows and then suddenly I'm all in blues at the moment. So it looks as if this has quite a, a variety of colours within it, which are coming through in the stripes. So pleased with how it's doing. And I shall continue on with it. And that's really all I've got to say about that at the moment. So I shall remember hopefully to put them back in the car you never know when you're going to need some emergency crochet. The other work in progress is the pattern that I'm working on while I'm checking my ceremonies. Uh, so I don't know if I've mentioned it yet this month, usually can't stop me. I conduct funerals 
and the day before I take the ceremony I read it aloud from the screen just to make sure it flows sometimes you don't realize how much you've repeated a word until you hear it so um, I read them all aloud and also gives me a sense of the timing and that sort of thing so I'm working on this stripy cardigan and I stopped at the end of a row because I knew I'd be showing it to you I'm such a pro so again quite a drapey fabric and the sleeves may be a little on the baggy side because we know that I don't like baggy sleeves but we'll see how we go on that one I've tapered in quite deeply at the cuff and they're not kind of super baggy I could try them on actually so let's try on a sleeve and see how we go Oh, not too bad. Uh, they are a little baggier than I normally make, but I've taken them in quite, there's quite a sort of steep decrease here. And I also decreased during the working of the cuff. So that does make it a nice sort of balance there. So yeah, these are bigger than I would normally expect them to be because kind of that's my arm here. So it's quite a bit of extra, not quite a bit of extra fabric, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with that and see how that works. Excuse me while I just get dressed again. It's too chilly to only be wearing half a cardigan. So what is this pattern? This is by Nicola Susan. I hope you're having a drinking game and taking a sip of something adult and strong every time I mention Nicola Susan. This is the Eureka cardigan. Now excuse the state of this pattern. It's folded up. It sits in a drawer. It's um, yes. It's the Eureka. So it's a cardigan and it has this central vent at the back, which is where the increases are made. The yarns I'm using are all lace weight yarns. Every now and again, I buy lace weight yarns and work on the assumption that I'm going to make a shawl out of lace weight yarn. Oh, how we laugh because the likelihood of me making anything out of lace weight yarn single plied um not i don't mean single plied but you know a single strand of it it's not going to happen luckily i buy yarns in a color palette that they all kind of go together so i'm getting away with it so i've doubled them tripled them in some cases because some of them are very fine sort of borderline cobweb and those are making up the stripes they are a little bit random I had started to make a crochet boxy with this and it was too drapey it really didn't work and I put some stripes in and cut yarn so basically when I started with this I just used the balls of yarn as I had them so my sleeves don't match you see my colors are completely different on my sleeves don't care so it's going to be a, a sort of nice spring autumn weight cardigan because uh, it is fairly drapey fairly soft and I'm looking forward to wearing it but because I only do it when I'm reading my ceremonies I've been quite busy this year so I've got quite a bit done but uh sometimes that can sit in the drawer for a while depending on my workload so those are my two significant works in progress as i say next month you'll also hopefully see how i'm getting on with the red sweater how i'm getting on with the harvest and i'm still wanting to start the revamp of the four pattern that i unpicked i have some lovely aran weight yarn and because that's a pattern excuse the phone because that's a pattern that you can do in any gauge i'm thinking that would be a good way to put the errands that i've got together It'd be quite bright that's never been an issue for me so that may happen that may happen that's all the knitting for this month such as it is all the unpicking for this month such as it is so what does April hold? It holds Easter for those who celebrate, chocolate for the rest of us, um, 
we have uh, I have a visit to see some friends so I'm going to be spending a few days with them very much looking forward to that and I'm going to take a little bit of time off work the nature of my work is such that I feel like I kind of fill up with all of the emotion and all of the stuff that's going on and families that don't get on with each other and all of that and so periodically I need to take time away from it and just kind of let that all just work its way out let my brain settle so that's what I'm going to do uh, this month I know when I'm getting to that stage uh, for two reasons firstly I start getting very anxious about have I got the details right am I on my way to the right crematorium have I got the time right you know I get super anxious about those and the other symptom is that as soon as the phone rings I swear at it so that's normally a sign that I've kind of had enough and need a bit of a break so that's what I'm going to do this month and I think that's it for the end of March. So if you'd like to join in with the make along, please do so. It'd be lovely to see what you're up to. Uh, I'm always so inspired by the pictures and the projects that I see in the make alongs. And my own list of favourite patterns and my queue just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but it is just so lovely to see what people make. I hope that you enjoy it if you take part. If you're not someone who knits for other people, then I'm sorry that you won't be eligible for this make-along, but there are lots out there, so there'll be plenty you can join in with. I think I'm going to call it there for this week, except to say thank you so much for being here. Please do add your thoughts and comments. I always love to hear from you. really do appreciate you taking the time to watch the podcast and to, to make a comment, so thank you for that. Have a good month. I'll see you Friday if you watch the vlogs or at the end of April, which according to my calendar will be the 29th, um, if you watch the podcasts. Thanks again, everyone. Take good care. See you soon. Bye bye.